I'll yeah. tell you one thing, Jackson, you tough, but you know, you gave me a completely different new vision of law that I needed for the time. And honestly, it was the best thing I ever did. Welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And we have a great story and a great person, somebody that I really enjoyed working with, a new member of the Florida Bar. Andrea, how are you? Hi, Jackson. Hi, everybody. I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, we are so glad to have you here. And your story is wonderful on a lot of levels. But obviously, as people can hear from your accent, you were not born and raised in Florida, were you? No, I am born in Brazil and I moved to the United States 2002. I'm a Brazilian attorney, licensed attorney there. And I went through a quite process here to get my license in Florida. I was an LLM, international arbitration. And then I was accepted to Judy's doctor program at the University of Miami. So just to be clear to people, Florida does not allow foreign trained attorneys to come and take their exam. You have to go through a fairly rigorous process and end up getting a JD from a U.S. approved law school. And so you went to the University of Miami, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's a long that's a long task, isn't it? Did you think all that would be what was necessary when you came to the U.S.? Not really. <laughs> I was thinking maybe get my license in other states that allows LLM to take the bar directly, but life changed. I'm not in my 20s anymore and brought me to Florida. So here I am. Yeah. You took the Florida bar in this strange exam that was given in October of 2020. It was a one day online exam, unlike anything else. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. We'll bring back sort of those memories to you. But it was not your first time taking the exam, was it? No, that was my second time. But the first time I had only, I, I knew I wasn't ready. So I decided to take the, the bar just to see what happened. I had one month only to study. So I knew for sure that I wasn't ready. Yeah. And you came to us for that October exam and you selected our personal coaching program. So you and I worked together, which meant that I reduced you to tears, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 times at least. <laughs> but we worked really hard. You worked really hard on your writing and your skills. And you also used photo reading. Is that correct? Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you one thing, Jackson, you tough, but you know, you gave me a completely different new vision of law that I needed for the time. And honestly, it was the best thing I ever done because I now I can use everything I learned it with you for the rest of my life as an attorney. It's in a way, a lot of simpler way of seeing, more logical, more direct to the point and train your brain to think as a lawyer, which when you learn at school, it doesn't feel very, I think it, the problem with me wasn't very convincing that uh, that was the right way to write. So yes. yeah, and, and that writing process was really a big part of it because when you when we started, the way that you were writing was to memorize. You you worked very hard. You, I don't know that I had a student that worked harder than you, Andrea, but you memorized a lot and you were reciting elements and you got very frustrated, didn't you? When I started saying that doesn't work, that's not convincing, that doesn't tell me anything about what you know about the law. What did that feel like when we were starting in that process? It was a shock for me at the first because it's completely the opposite of everything we learned in law school. I, I guess most of law school, I don't know. I cannot talk for other law school, but I don't know if I'm lucky to learn in the same way that you were directing me to think. Like the mind maps was amazing. I still use it all the time. Photo reading in the beginning was like, oh my God, is this going to work? Are you sure? <laughs> but things that start coming to your mind very quickly. I yeah. Really and, and we really started to see that you began to gain more confidence that you knew the law between the photo reading that you were doing and the mind mapping and the work that you were doing. And as we started to work on your writing and make it more focused on the conflicts in the problem and how you use the law instead of just saying, here are the elements of the law, it started to, to make sense to you, didn't it? Yes, totally. Yeah. I, I was at the beginning, like I said, very not sure if I was doing the right thing, because, but it was perfect. It worked amazing for me. That's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. Yeah. And, and of course, the Florida exam, for those that don't know it, started, was going to be given in person in July of 2020. Then it was postponed to August of 2020. And 
put on, on in an online format. And then the weekend before the exam was to be given, what happened? Do you remember? Oh, yes, I do remember. My friends and I, we were all talking to each other at 11.30 p.m. the night before the exam, like the exam was canceled. So what are we going to do now? We had no idea what, what exactly was going on at the time, but that was quite an amazing experience. We were prepared for a July exam and the extent September, not sure, August, not sure, September, not sure, October, when finally we had the exam, we were thinking they would take it easy on us after <laughs> everything we went through and it was completely the opposite. Yeah, it was an incredibly yeah. tough exam, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what the examiners did is they they had a problem with their proctoring. And so they canceled it in what we're calling the Sunday night surrender before the, the Tuesday exam. And suddenly you're all ready to take the test and you and I had talked and you were ready. And then the brakes get slammed on. And what was that like trying to reset yourself, knowing that you had another six weeks or so until the actual exam? If I remember, we had no date for the exam. Yeah canceled so we were not sure how long would be like in this place but it was a marathon for real well I wasn't sure when and how and what it would be in the exam or anything so just need to keep studying every day with the same consistency that we were being studying before. It's like when you're almost reaching, I used to be a swimmer. For me, it's like almost reaching the wall and they say, no, you didn't, you don't finish yet. So you have to keep swimming. But I, I gave everything I had. So keep going. All right. Oh, I had no more energy. Yeah. And I think that I, it's really, I'm glad you mentioned being a swimmer because we talked a lot about your competitive instinct and your training as an athlete because it really came into play, didn't it? You had to really dig deep to, to keep going and keep working towards this thing that kept moving away from you. It kept getting further and further away, right? Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. One of the things that I'm grateful to you, you are a very good coach. Everybody helped a lot, but it's like discipline and discipline is this three words that I had to follow consistently throughout the whole program. Otherwise, I was like swimming and die on your last lap. It's horrible. You don't want this. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I, I was the disciplinarian. I was the one saying, you got to stay in it. You got to keep your head in the game. You can't give up. You can't get distracted. And it was easy to get distracted, wasn't it? There was so much chatter going on everywhere, on the internet, among friends, on the, the bar sites. Every place was talking about what this exam was going to be. And I remember we kept talking and I said, look, just keep your head down. Just keep working, doing what you've been doing. Keep working on the photo reading and the mind maps and writing essays and so on. And then we get to the exam day. It finally comes. It's an online exam. Can you talk a little bit about what that process was like for you? I thought it was would be harder. Maybe I was expecting some big, big problems happen. I got like the first uh, software we had to download it. I had my computer hacked. I had to buy a new computer. It was a whole process that I don't even want to get there. But, and was just doing exam at school. Like when you have a clean everything, just sit and type. So I was, was comfortable with. I wasn't. Yeah. Very Did you like taking the exam from home? Was that better than traveling up to Tampa and sitting for the exam? Oh, so much better. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, that you have no one, nothing in the middle. And we just, I, I like it better. Yeah. And of course, it was a one-day exam and there was no multi-state bar. There were just Florida multiple choice and Florida essays. And then, of course, they threw some very strange topics in there, like Florida trusts. What was that like when you saw those questions? I was grateful that I studied very hard for the trusts, your classes especially, what saved me. Because it looks like you knew all the questions on trusts and states they would ask. Even though it was not multiple choice, you know, your lessons on trusts and states is what saved me on the multiple choice. Yeah, that's great. And so... It was just a strange day. It was a long day of testing. I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about what it's like when English isn't your first language and learning to write under time conditions a bar essay. Can you talk a little bit about that? I can try. I can try <laughs> to 
express myself, but it's more like a, it's something, some feeling that you have, like insecurity, because I have a great vocabulary in my first language. In English, I had to improve everything. And I had three years during the law school to learn everything. One of the, the most important things, you have a fluent vocabulary that I can count on when I need to write. The time between processing Analyze the essay, process in your mind and write or outline. I might usually process and outline. It's, it needs to be quite quickly. So I practice a lot yeah. of essays. I, I lost a count of how many essays. Yeah, I think you wrote as many essays as any student I had. And, and one of the things that we saw over time was that you went from relatively short essays or you didn't get much many words on the page in an hour to actually getting uh, a full, complete essay really well thought out and really well presented. And I think that comes with practice and with just immersing yourself in, in the process. As a photo reader, and I get this question from foreign trained attorneys a lot. They say, could I use photo reading if English isn't my first language? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. In fact, uh, while you, was, while you were talking, just came something to my mind. Is like, it's the same thing that learn a process, how to speak another language. For example, I don't know all the vocabularies, but some words come in my mind. It must read somewhere. And that's exactly what I, I think about photo reading. You just go and photo read everything. And at the moment you need, it looks like my brain makes the connections, like exactly like the mind maps, make the, the connections and the words come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when you were photo reading, how many times would you read photo read an outline of a subject, would you say? Yeah. Because you could read a whole subject in just a few minutes, right? Yeah. Every day it was at the end of us photo reading every day, all the outlines and work on my mind maps. You also took our Abundance for Bar Study Masterclass, am I right? Yes. Well, can you tell people a little bit about that and whether it was helpful to you? Yes. It helps, especially after they cancel the bar. And we were like, I was a mix of anxiety and stress and everything. So that would make me bring myself and me, it's uh, the way I saw is a way of meditation and, and uh, positive saying to myself. So I want to make sure that I, I was focused on what I have to do and not what my brain was stressed, exhausted, or anxious. I want to just, uh, in that, the, that class, I'll call it class, it was very helpful to bring myself into my center, my inner, back to my place. So right, I have to be. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty remarkable. And I know that it just, it was a marathon. I, I don't think there's any other way to describe it. The Florida students probably had it worst of anyone in the country because they thought they were going to take the exam and then at the last minute being told they weren't. But once the exam was over, you were done in October. What was it like when you were finished? What was the feeling? <laughs> That's funny you asking this because I'm still trying to find myself after the exam. It was so long process of studying that I, I almost felt, you know, this emptiness. This You missed me. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. They call it the Stockholm Syndrome, folks. But there is this gap, isn't there? You've been working so hard and you were studying so intensely that it just had to be like falling off a cliff, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think falling off a cliff, you knew exactly what would happen to you. You're going to die probably. It's too high. After the exam, I'm not sure. It's like, what is and now? It's over? Are you sure? Like, it's... Yeah, very different. And then it wasn't all that long until results came out. They were released about six weeks after. Can you tell me about what that was like on the day results came out? I, I had to look several times to make sure my number was there. And I wasn't sure if I remember my num from my, my registration number, you know, I had to look over and over to make sure that was the right number. It's a little weird because they don't write your name. They don't send you an email or anything. You have to go through this list with the different numbers. So I was consistently check, is this my number? Are you sure? Pass. Like, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's an incredible feeling. And what did your family think? 
they are like, they know from the beginning, I have two sons. They know from the beginning that I was incredible, amazing. I, they, I was pretty hard task to do. And they're very proud of me. They're watching everybody. They both watching me sworn and online sworn, which was also a little different. But yeah, yeah interesting. I, Everybody's very proud of me. Yeah. And I remember during your conversations, we talked about your sons and how proud you were of them and how you wanted them to be proud of you. So you, you accomplished that, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah. That's got to be a super great feeling. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a new beginning now. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Now that, that you're a member of the Florida Bar, what comes next for you? I'm trying to organize my thoughts if I'm going to go with my own private projects or I'm going to go and work in some law firm. I had some offers already and or even government job. I'm thinking, consider and some so I can get more experience, even though I don't know if I need it. I've been thinking about working some of the skills that I need uh, and need both languages while I speak Spanish, Portuguese, English, and a little bit Italian. So something, of course, immigration is one of them. Family law, mediation. Not that I don't like court, but I really like alternative disputes, resolutions. Yeah. And maybe real estate construction. That's awesome. It's great to have that many choices. When you look back on the journey of coming to the U.S. and then going and having to get your JD starting all over again, even though you were a Brazilian attorney, and then having to take the bar, was it worth it to get to this point? No, yes. But yeah. you all tell everyone of my friends are willing to do the same thing. Be prepared. It's not what you think. It's a lot of, you have to go through a lot of effort. In, in consistency, in discipline, you pretty much don't have a life for three years. Yeah. My law school wasn't easy also. So it's a whole, you have to be determined. Is you know. Yeah, and I would say that you are one of the most determined people I had met. You just were not going to give up. You weren't going to, it didn't mean you didn't have bad days, but you were absolutely determined. And I loved it when we would talk. You fought back. You pushed hard when you didn't like what I was telling you. And I loved that sense of just a desire to be better and better. You weren't content with just being okay. You needed to get better. And I, I absolutely think that's an incredible skill to have. I want to congratulate you for that. And you survived all those calls with me. What advice would you give people who have taken the exam and not been successful? What would you say to them now? Don't give up. It's uh, every exam you take is something you learned and making sure to work on your mistakes, see what you got wrong and do what you need. I got a lessons with you for writing and it was very helpful. So just don't give up. Work and study. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I uh, uh, just curious, how did you find Celebration Bar Review? Do you remember? Yes, I do remember. I was frustrated with my results. So I wasn't satisfied with my previous bar review. And so I was looking for something different, something that would bring something extra to the plate. Not just a, a routine exercise, but something that I, I can't fit on, like the mind maps, the photo reading, the, the system of thoughts, the, the way you think, I think is what you have in the, your outlines are amazing. I'm going to keep using it for, for projects and everything. Thanks. I, I appreciate that. I'm glad. And it was really an honor to be able to work with you. I, I know that I pushed you hard. But it was because I really believed that you were totally capable of doing this. And we just needed to help you refine those edges and learn those things. And you embraced all those things. Andrea, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you for sharing your story. We are so proud of you. We are delighted that, that we could be part of the journey. I'm excited to see what you choose to do from all those different things you can do. And uh, I'm just really pleased that you're a member of the, the Florida Bar. It is great for the Florida Bar. It's great for, for you. And we love to see those happy endings. Anything else you want to share with our audience before we sign off today? I just want to thank you because uh, I needed somebody to guide me. And you were there. Thank you. It was my honor. Thanks, everybody, for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as Andrea and I have. It's been fun to catch up and see what's been going on. I hope that you're encouraged and just 
really pumped up after you've heard this because it really is possible to be successful. And we want to thank all of you and thank you, Andrea. And with that, we'll say goodbye. Take care, everybody. <laughs>